Hey, hey, my people. Hey, hey, my people. Welcome to the Great Start Studio, where all my dreams are coming true. I built this whole place so that I could record video for my entire series, all 13 books. If you get a minute, go check it out. It's on Amazon. It walks through every kind of meter. There's whole books in 7.8 and 5.8 and 7.4, and you're going to want to delve into that. Today, I want to talk to you about I have these sticking illustrations I've been running down. with. It. Every time I'm talking to a student, I have my sticks in my hand, and I use the stick as an illustration. Today, I want to talk to you about the idea of less and more so less and more now i just did a video on big kits versus small kits and you're going to want to check that out i think that's uh, video 21 but we're going to be talking about less notes and more notes uh, i have students who ask me about this in a song what am i supposed to play in a song i go well you can play anything you want in a song if you're just rehearsing over something uh, for fun in a track a song is like a glorified metronome it's like a real life metronome it has feel it has uh, changes in it it has melody you're going to want to practice every kind of thing on that scope so as a practice Thing of less is more. I like to start when I get a track, like when some, when I get hired and people just uh, throw songs at me, they'll throw like 50 songs at you, go, well, what is the minimal amount of notes that I can use to make this song work? The minimal amount, the minimal amount of hi-hat notes, of bass notes, just the pulse with no flurry, no fills, no extra ornamentation, 30 second note jumps, and you got the hi-hat opening, stepping, all that, all that stuff that you add in as an ornament, just the pulse. And so then I try to get really comfortable all the way over here with the pulse. So I tell the students, if you can just start with the pulse, then your ears are wide open. You've got lots of headroom, lots of space to be able to think about what is actually happening in the song. What is the bass doing? What is the guitar doing? What are the, what's the original drummer doing? Now the original drummer may not be playing the pulse, maybe playing anywhere in this spectrum. I would start with the pulse of the song and then you know how to strip it down to its bare essence. And then what I do is I go, well, just add in something, one extra bass note and see what the best extra bass note would be. The very best one that seems to help in this one section. Then I would say, what would you do to add in a, a single hi-hat opening? Start including your left foot with one motion for your balance. So we're talking about practice. And I'm not talking about adding them in in the course of a song. I'm talking about playing the entire song many times, absolutely stripped down so that you can get to where you can control yourself. A lot of people, there's kind of a bell curve and they get used to just practicing in one spot on the bell curve. We are full spectrum people here. At the Great Start Studio, we are raising full spectrum drummers and we want people who are responsible to the music in any place in that spectrum that you want to jump in at. There are different things that are necessary. There are different people who hire you and there are different uh, requirements for the music in the setting and everything. And there's a bunch of things to kind of keep track of. But what I'm talking about is just learning. The act of learning and controlling yourself for self-control, the discipline of it. Then you go through and you add one thing, you add another thing and another thing. And you start adding things. Now I'm talking about after you run it through, you know, four or five times, super basic, then you add something. You do that a while, you get comfortable in every world. Now we talked about this about tempo, is you want to get comfortable in every tempo type, even off the tempo chart, so you can just get a learning tempo that you would never use in real life. It's just so slow that you are making sure every action is right. This is basically the idea that I'm talking about, about less and more. Not less is more, because I actually believe less is less and more is more. Less is not necessarily more. This is where we get in some kind of conflict here with what the song require, what the people require, what the, the your artist requires, and what you require as a person. Now, if you take somebody like Vinnie Kalayuda, Vinnie Kalayuda, many times people will say, oh, he's just playing, he's playing too many notes, or he's playing too unusual n type of note groupings or something. But then he'll turn around and play something that he's hired to do that is the most elegant selection of a handful of notes. I had this one CD and there's a song on there that he played on and I would have never had any idea that it was him. He was hired to come in and play. He just played just tiny little thing. He doesn't have to be playing. He can play anywhere in the spectrum that he wants. As an artist, he's choosing different places to play that he thinks is responsible to the music, responsible to his art. What you want to do is just practice from absolute less, absolute less down to the essence. Most of the time, we, we're not comfortable with that. We haven't really made those hard choices of selection. Just get rid of all that stuff. And then you start building it up, you build it up, and you build it up. In the Vinnie Call You model, he can play just absolutely the most minimal part and then just kind of absolutely go over 
the song, like where he's soloing across, kind of like with Alan Holdsworth. You could just make a drum solo out of his, if you just exited all the other tracks, it would be like a drum solo in a way because he's playing so many different types of things. This is a learning event. This is a learning event as you go. There's problems of playing less. There's huge problems at this point because all of these ideas come rushing in into the space. And before you know it, your foot is playing an extra note. You're like, no, I'm controlling myself to not play that extra note. It takes discipline to play less. It, like just like slow it takes a, an immense amount of discipline to just play less it also takes an immense amount of discipline to play more you don't have any extra headspace you're filling everything in uh something grabbing your attention at every second because you're you're so noty and it's so dense and so these two problems are enormous problems so the music may require i've done every yeah, i've done every kind of country and metal and cajun and uh, funk and latin gigs i've done, <laughs> I've done every kind of tribute with uh Elton John tributes and Michael Jackson tributes and uh, George Strait tributes and, and you know Rod Stewart, all, every kind of thing that I can think to do if you're in a tribute totally different situation you are trying to play what the guy played on the record or whatever the live version is that the artist is trying to recreate totally different problem I'm talking about learning so that you are in control of yourself in every part of this dynamic then if you are in a setting where you get to choose, every setting you always get to be an artist in some degree. Outside of tribute work, uh, let's say it's 5%. So let's say 5% of the track can be you. Well, you can kind of choose what you want to put into this track that's still acceptable in the group. Now, some groups of people are much more open to experimentation, to the artistry of, of each individual person in the band as opposed to what was recorded in the song. And so then you are more free. Let's say it's 40%. 50%, 100%, where you could have complete carte blanche choosing of any kind of note that you wanted to put in there. I've been in every one of these kind of situations, and I always kind of pull back just a little bit. Whatever everybody seems to be agreeing on that you could just play any, absolutely everything you want, we can always kind of pull back just a hair from that. If it's 100%, I'll be at 90%. Just I know this is just my nature of trying to serve everyone so everyone still has kind of their space. You want to be comfortable in every section of this thing. Less is less and more is more and less is not a negative thing and more is not a negative thing. It's just all part of the spectrum. We've got to get into this that we've got to be full spectrum people. When you look out at other people, that way you'll give them the grace of saying, well, these are the choices that they're making. I wouldn't have made those choices. I'm not in that situation. But when I'm in that situation, I would probably do this choice or this choice. As an artist, we all get to choose all this stuff. Oh, there's so, I, I could talk about artistry all day. These drumstick illustrations are made so that we get the 30,000 foot view so that when you're in the series and you're walking it down, you actually have the whole geography and knowing how to place this stuff. It's really important to understand the full spectrum. We get so caught in an A spectrum. You know, we're down in the weeds, working out a thing, pressing out something, and you forget really that this whole other thing exists and you have to be responsible for all of it. Uh, there are choices I make on my own volition that say, hey, as an artist, I like this thing. I gravitate towards this feel towards this tempo block better than other ones it as an artist that's where i like to live but i want to be comfortable in playing as much of this as possible so when i talk to the students i say dude get the full spectrum <laughs> i need to write a book called life is a drumstick because i i'm constantly with the drumstick holding it like this hey so if there's anything in my work that appeals to you you know hit subscribe like uh, i'm building up the channel now i just my birthday is september 8th i'm gonna start uh this is august 16th so i have i always set these giant goals for my birthday and for everything but really for my birthday i'm trying to get all these videos and all this kind of work uh work in the studio behind me so that i can just concentrate fully on recording the videos for the entire series. The courses will be available on my on my website. That's at londongreatstartdrumset.com. All the books are available on Amazon. Uh, you just go to Amazon, look up uh, Larry London Drum Set, it'll come up. On the channel, I just made uh, a, a walk down of every single book so that you can see uh, and some examples, playing examples of every single book. So you're going to want to go through that. So, and also go through all these drumstick videos. They're so amazing. They are walking down all of these points of reference for our drumming universe so that we can place our work in a healthy way, be the most effective uh, drummers possible, the effective learners, effective performers and recorders. We just want to be that full spectrum sort of person so that if anybody ever asks you to play, you just go, yeah.
Yeah, I can do it. So I, I'm, I gotta make these short. So from the Great Start Studio, back at it.